All right, a little bit of a change here. I'm going to make an arrowhead out of some gray Novaculite that I received as a gift. It's going to be a desert point, side notch type. Uh, this material is probably not native to this to the area where these were normally found, but I haven't worked much in Novaculite, so now's my chance. Should be pretty straightforward if I don't break it. Heat treated Novaculite. It's a nice change of pace. Change of mindset. It's going to be a <clears throat> excuse me. It's going to be a relatively small point, you know, true arrow point. So the loss of that material at the top wasn't too bad. I mean, doesn't really matter too much. Okay, I'll thin down this little chunk and then pressure flick the rest. Let's see. I could try to do this as fast as possible. That might be interesting, but. I don't think I will. Well, we'll see. Someone asked me what this was. This is a broken grinding wheel. Very large. Very old. It's very coarse. I've got some grinding wheels that are not so coarse. But it doesn't really matter too much with this type of flint napping. what the grit is because I'm just knocking off the weak areas I'm not really smoothing out the edges I just want to knock down the weak areas so you don't have to go out and get a an old coarse large stone or wheel like this any old grinding wheel from the hardware store will work you just break it it breaks relatively easily with a hammer into quarters or whatever. Doesn't need to be pretty. For those who don't know what this material is. much faster and easier than a stone, a natural stone. What's going to be cool about this is the translucency. Once I get it thin, it's going to be pretty translucent. Hopefully I can thin this way down without breaking it. So what do I talk about during this relatively easy arrowhead type? Talk about some natural tools. I put most of my antler into storage. I need to make a new set of natural tools. I've been saying that for a while. But I'm going to make a whole new set, and probably more than one set, because if I start doing Cody points and 
Um, Folsom types and other specialty fancy types. I'm going to need some, probably some fancy tools. Maybe a jig or two. First view points with the fl that parallel flaking. Uh, I said plain view before, but I meant first view. I've been wanting to make some of those. I've made some before, but they were, you know, pretty crude by comparison. And not with natural tools. What would be a natural specialized tool? Um, well, the holding pads are going to be critical on some of these types. Maybe some support for fluting. Um, that kind of thing. We'll see how it goes. I use up my pressure flakers, my natural pressure flakers are getting used up really fast. Uh, can't ever seem to have enough of those antler pressure flakers, so I have to make like a set of 10 or something just to keep up with how fast they wear down without having to keep grinding in each video. I was gifted a bunch of brow tines. That makes excellent pressure flakers. It's a very dense part of the whitetail antlers that I got. The brow tines. All right, noveculite pressure flakes extremely easily, so I gotta remember not to go, not to overdo it. I could snap the whole thing. In comparison to other types of material, the vacuola is so much easier, but not quite as delicate as obsidian. It's going to be kind of narrow, so. So what else, what else, what else? Natural tools. I'm going to be doing some European style arrowheads. I got a request to do this type of arrowhead. three-sided from Denmark I don't think I got the base right I think what happens with this is it needs to be more slanted so you can put the arrow shaft next to it and wrap it up you know the arrow shaft will be also slanted as far as a cut for the placement of the arrowhead I got to look that up but I did some research on these uh, this is my first attempt the other day just working with very tough material because it's cheap, I can get a lot of it. Looks very crude. Then I spent a lot of time struggling with this one. Uh, mainly because of the just the hardness of the stone. It's difficult to map. But I'll be doing that on video soon with a better material like this here. I was thinking of using this piece you know, with this flat side uh, showing on the finished piece. 
Let's see. I wanted to use that for something more showy. And I don't know about the length. I don't know if this is long enough to look accurate. I need to look and get some dimensions off of the Lithix Casting Lab website. Three-sided arrowhead. Three-sided projectile point. I don't know what they call it. I think they call it three-sided for sure. Danish three-sided arrowhead. I don't know. So I'll be doing that coming up shortly. If I can find a good piece of material that's not too expensive. This is expensive stuff. If I buy it, if I find it, you know, it's rare. If I buy it, it's, it's expensive. So I, I don't know if I want to use that material. But if I have to, I will. Yeah, I took off too much there on that pressure flake here near the tip. But it might be okay still. See, I can barely see that. All right. So a lot of these true arrowheads are lots of pressure, pressure flaking. I should use a finer grit on these small true arrow points. It's a finer grit of a braiding stone. Oh well. Thinning with pressure. It's sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, like everything else, but I prefer indirect percussion for thinning. So let's not fight it. So much easier. As long as I don't overshoot it. I speak too soon? No, it's okay. And this particular one is a, a, a commission point. I know who it's going to already. Might as well get it on film. If it works out. I know who's getting this one already. But I'm making a bunch for the upcoming auction on Sunday. I'm running out of stuff from my personal collection. So I gotta make more. Make a variety of different things. In the next few days, I'm still up north, still cold, although today is pretty much like yesterday, still not too cold. It's nice to experiment and all. Nap in the cold weather. Definitely you need shelter in cold weather when napping. Get out of the wind at least. Being cold 
really wears on the brain. It doesn't allow you to think clearly. At least not with me, anyway. All right, so it's getting kind of thin. So go back to pressure for a little while and see what, what I can do. I'll make this one as long as possible. That's always the best strategy as far as being a cool looking point. So I'm just taking some edge off so I can make it more narrow. Not even looking. Hopefully not too many step fractures. Yeah, just as I say that. There are no shortcuts. You can't just go to town on it without Paying attention. I wish I could. Let's see. What do you guys do when you're napping? Do you listen to music and stuff? I hardly ever listen to music. Sometimes I'll listen to an audiobook when I'm napping. I listen to music, yeah, but not when I'm napping usually. I don't like having headphones on either when I'm napping. But I do like listening to a good audiobook sometimes. When you're in the zone and you're concentrating, you can absorb information from the book easily. At least I can. So this is just straightforward. Uh, removing width. I'm not thinning. Need to get the general shape. Long and narrow. It gets dicey when it starts to get really narrow. Easy to break and easy to become too narrow. When it becomes too narrow, you can't thin it down without having it turn into a drill. All right. All right, some of you guys are stuck at this stage. Can't do much with it after this. But this has to be thinned down considerably more to make it look good. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. I think I might have messed it up a little bit because it's all kind of wonky. But I'll leave it wonky on the edges. I'm not going to be too picky on this one. Sometimes it makes it look more authentic when it's all kind of uh, wavy on the edge instead of perfectly straight okay let's see I do need to thin it down some more I barely have enough tip on this one let's see if I can improve this little pressure flaker before I replace that copper tip
to be filed down some of this wood too. Oh yeah, so much easier than the previous stone I was working on. Using a lot of inward force. But I gotta be careful not to snap it. Especially when I take some flakes off the base. Very easy to snap it in half right now. going to be a concave base anyway so I got room to create another edge <clears throat> and start to drive more flakes to thin that down this side is okay already but this side is kind of thick Gotta be able to push off on that. On that edge. On that bevel. Put a little bevel on the bottom. I'm just pushing on that, making sure I don't bend it anywhere here. Driving those flakes inward as far as I can. A lot of inward pressure, not much downward pressure. Okay, so now I can thin from the side a little bit. I think I'll use some percussion to thin the sides, thin from the sides. be too grippy as far as the tool tip I can't let it get too dimpled so I gotta smooth it out smoothen smoothing it out I'm 
because if it's too dimply, it'll grab it, pull on it really hard, and snap it. Don't want that. I want to grab a little bit, but not much. All right, so gloves are getting in the way. Let's see what I can do here. This is when it gets tricky. So I gotta do a lot of force actually, but no overshots. Yeah, they're not traveling. A little bit more force, kind of dicey. See, there's some deposit of aluminum on there. That means I hit it pretty hard. Yeah, that was okay. As long as it doesn't step fracture or scoop out. Yeah, a little bit of a scoop out. Oh well. really hard hit blew away a lot of that mass Let's see how am i going to get rid of that probably a flake from the base up into that area I can get rid of that perhaps different ways to do it i suppose some of you guys will <clears throat> Would probably take another approach than from the base, but maybe pick it off, pick at that. Let's see, if I pick at that like this, I can lessen it. But I still need to come up from the base to get a, a more aesthetic looking you know, pretty looking finish, prettier. All right, here goes. Here goes prettier looking finish. Okay. Edge crushed a little bit on that one. Same there. Yeah, some of you guys are using sharper tips than I am. Probably a good thing, good idea to use a sharper tip than this, but it's getting worn down to a nub. Maybe I'll make another copper pressure flaker in a little bit. Those are fairly easy to make. So attempting some thinning flakes. See how it goes. How do you guys are breaking them at this stage? Just be very careful, that's all I can say. Applying a lot of pressure and holding my breath, I'm trying to get these 
travel. These close-ups working out, I don't even know, I can't even tell. Probably blurry for about 15 minutes there. All right, so I'm trying to get rid of this little mess there. One more, one more flake before I move on to the next segment. Let's see. It doesn't take much, but I gotta be more effective than that. All right, next segment. 